lots of people have been asking about ways to use images as SDS in RayTK. So finally, in version 0.46, it's actually possible now, thanks to a component from David Braun. One important thing to note, though, is that this release of RayTK is built for the 2025 experimental touch designer versions, so it's not going to work in earlier builds like the 2023 ones. The specific operator that we're going to be talking about isn't using anything that really like depends on new 2025 stuff, but it was added after I had kind of already moved everything over and things aren't backwards compatible. If for some reason it's really important to you to be able to use that in earlier versions of touch, like those 2023 builds, um, let me know in the comments and I'll figure out a way to make that work. We'll be going through a small example of how to use this new operator. This isn't going to be like a full scene, just kind of more focusing on that specific operator. If you want to know more about how to use RayTK in general, I recommend starting with one of the scene tutorials, um, or you can do the intro series if you would like to go through things kind of like concept by concept instead of in a project format. I'll add links in the description for both of those. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. The first step is to download the library from the GitHub releases page. You want to get at least version 46, but if there's a newer one, you can use that instead. Down at the bottom, you're going to see this raytk something.talks. That's the one you want to get. Don't get the source code. This is going to get you a bunch of files that are not what you're looking for. Once you have that downloaded, open a new touch designer project, which obviously won't look like this. I just have this stuff in here for the purposes of making the video, but yeah, just open a new project. And then jump up with the U key outside of that main project comp. And then you're going to drag that raytk talks file in here. And things are probably going to stall a little bit when you do that. So whenever you're done, jump back into project one. Open the RayTK palette with Alt-R. And then type in Raymarsh Render 3D or just RR3. Click that and drop one of those into the project. Then dragging out from that first output, create a null pop. select the renderer and open RayTK's editor tools menu with alt shift R. Under add camera, choose linked camera. Then on the linked camera, we're going to click create camera viewport. On the camera viewport, go to the first page of custom parameters, one labeled camera, and then we're going to drag this null top into the render top parameter. This is going to give us an interactive viewport once we have stuff in the scene. Select the renderer again and open the editor tools with Alt Shift R. And this time under Add Light, choose Point Light. On the light, change the position to something like one, two, four. Again, if you want to know more about all of this setup and what these things are, I recommend watching one of the scene tutorials. Now we can get to the actual image part of things. Create a movie file in top. Click the plus next to its file parameter. And then in here, pick one of these butterfly images that are from the touch samples folder. And then drag out from that movie file in, create a null. Or ATK palette with Alt R and type in image SDF 2D. Drop one of those into the project. Take that null top and wire it into the second input, the top input on the image SDF. In future versions, there might be additional inputs or something. Just make sure you're getting the one that has a top input. Since this is a 2D SCF, we can't directly connect this up to the Raymark Render or we'll get an error. So instead, let's open the palette again. And this time we're going to create an extrude. I got the regular extrude, not the other fancy ones. Drop that in. Connect the image SDF up to its first input, the cross section SDF input. And then connect the output of that to the first input on the renderer. We're getting something in there, but 
definitely not looking right. One of the most important things to remember about the image SDF is that it needs to have a, any pixel be either on or off. So gradients and stuff are not going to work well. Basically what it's trying to do is figure out what area is shape and what area is not shape. The quick way to do that for this image would be to create a threshold top and then stick that between the null and the SDF. That's getting us something. And once we have something to actually see there, if you right click on this camera viewport, you can do view and that'll pop open a little window. You could also, if you just want to see the output, you could switch on the display flag on that null and then you'd see it in the background. But I just have a little viewer for this camera viewport in the side panel just to make it easier to record. So in that, you can do all the normal, the stuff that you normally do with a mouse in a geometry view. So you can left click to rotate and you can middle click and drag up and down to zoom in and out. So we're still seeing something in there that's like vaguely shaped the right way, but on the threshold top, the default settings have it using the luminance to de decide which parts of the image are kept and which parts are not. On this image, there is a transparent background. So if we change the RGB to alpha, then that's going to give us the right result. When you're using different kinds of images, you're going to have to tune this per that image. And the goal is to kind of identify which parts are part of a shape and which parts are not. And you can adjust the threshold and, you know, other settings to kind of tune that. It's worth noting that at least in this version of RayTK, it needs the image internally to be a square. So if you give it something that's not a square, it's going to use on the image SDF this fit parameter. This is going to look like what you see in a fit top because, you know, it's using one of those. And it's going to fit it down to a square. It's also going to use the resolution that you have set here. There are a list of specific resolutions here because doing the conversion from you know image to SDF data can get pretty costly if you have a larger image. So this will downsample anything um, down to a reasonable range. Although if you want, you could, you know, bump it up to like 4096. But in a lot of cases, you're not really going to be getting enough detail out of that anyway. So, so here the default of 128 is actually giving us enough to work with. Next, we'll apply color to the SDF using that same image. Create and assign color. Put that after the image SDF before the extrude. Then create a texture field. And make sure you get that one, not one of the other similarly named ones. Then drop that in. Connect it up to the second input on the assigned color. And then take this null top and get that part and not the threshold and connect that up to the input on the texture field. And there we go. This is taking that same image and it's applying the surface color attribute to areas of the SDF based on that image. And because the coordinates that are being used by the image SDF and the texture field are the same, then it's going to line up with you know, where it thinks the shape is and what color it should be. By default, the image SDF creates things in a negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, so like a size of one. To make it a little bit easier to work with, let's create a scale operator. And stick that after the extrude. And then wire that into the render. Bring the scale up to around 1.5 or 1.6, something around there. It's just going to make it easier to use the default range of parameters and some of the other operators we're going to use. If you rotate it, you're going to see, you'll notice that this is pretty thick. So on the extrude, let's drop that height down to maybe 0 0.03, something around there. So we got like a little bit of thickness, but not super thick. While there is a scale parameter on the image SDF, we would need to make sure that the texture is also scaled by exactly the same amount. So I guess you could, you know, he used the scale on that too, but 
um, just putting a scale afterwards is going to scale everything together. So it's easier. Now let's create a bend operator. And stick that after the scale. Set the direction to along x towards z. And then you can try adjusting this amount, and it's going to bend the shape, kind of flapping those wings. If you want to add some animation to this, you could use an expression. So expand out, clear out what's currently there, and then type something like math.sign parentheses, and then abs capital P time dot seconds times 0 0.5, and then close parentheses, and then times maybe 0 0.7. This expression that 0 0.5 is controlling how fast it goes, and 0 0.7 is controlling with how far it goes. You could also use, you know, an LFO chop or something if you want more control over that. I hope to add some fun stuff that highlights the fact that this is an SDF and do some kind of like special SDF things. So one of the simplest of those that we can do is just merge it with another shape. Create a sphere SDF. And then select that and the bend. And then open the editor tools with Alt Shift R. And under Arrange SDFs, choose Smooth Union. And then switch on this Enable Translate, and then connect it up to the renderer. So we're seeing something going on in there. I mean, it's thicker, but kind of hard to tell what's going on since a lot of the shape that appears to exist is there, but totally dark. That's happening because while we have color attributes assigned to this branch of things, like the image SDF part that's being extruded, we don't have anything set on the sphere. And so it's defaulting to just using the color from that butterfly image, which in all those areas is blank. So no color. Well, let's create an assign color and stick that after the sphere and before the arrange. Then you can drop the color down to maybe like 0 0.4, something like that. Now we're getting kind of what it looks like without any color attribute applied. And that's because like that 0 0.4 is around the default value that it uses when there are no colors specified anywhere. Over on the arrange for translate two, we can now use that to move that shape around. So move the sphere and kind of like see how it interacts with the butterfly. And you can also use the radius to control like how much it blends in with that. So there we go. We have gloopy stuff with butterflies and that's pretty great. There can be some distortion around the edges of the image area, but you can typically kind of like tune settings to avoid that, like, you know, making sure that the image is you know it doesn't go all the way out to the edges of the of the top or like adjusting how much it's blending with other shapes and so on so that's it for this one i'm curious to see what you all do with this i know people have been asking for it for a while and yeah really curious to see where that goes and while we did use just a still image here you can feed a video stream into that too and get some interesting results out of that as well and the main thing to remember here is this thresholding so you want to make sure you're getting to like white and black or white and transparent. Anyway, um, go forth and make stuff and use the RayTK hashtag and tag me if you want to show off your work. And also subscribe to my Patreon if you want to get early access to tutorials and Discord and other fun stuff. Thanks for watching and make sure to like, subscribe and turn on the notification icon.